Today on Beers TV, we have episode 18 of the Beerist WWC Hybrid System and three distinct topics today. First, a general maintenance rhythm. Next, a bit of what's next for this series as we approach the end. And lastly, announcing hashtag AskBeerisTV's $5,000 salt giveaway with 30 buckets of Brightwell Neomarine and 30 buckets of Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt. That's 60 buckets of salt, shipped for free. Hey, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV. This week's Beerus WWC Hybrid System is going to be kind of short and sweet because I don't think there are a lot of universally true statements on maintenance, and most of it's debatable or unique to your particular setup. So what are you going to see today? Well, I'm just going to share what WWC does, and you can apply what makes sense to the home environment and your own unique system. After that, we're approaching the end of this series, and I think it's a good time to share what's next. So starting with WWC maintenance, you may want to do more or less than this, but no, this is what has achieved this kind of results with 900, 500, and 293, so there's certainly one solid, repeatable path to success. Maintenance is part of keeping everything healthy, clean, and equipment running, all critical for long-term success. So starting with daily and weekly, it's just cleaning the glass daily. That's a combination of both the mag cleaner as well as some RODI water sprayed on the glass for a final polish. Just to note, if this is something that you do yourself, make sure to clean up the excess moisture on the stand because the moisture can ruin the finish over time. In terms of testing, they test alkalinity twice a week, calcium, magnesium, nitrate, and phosphate weekly, and they got to a lot to protect here. So the kind of testing schedule like this makes a ton of sense. I think for the average reefer, it's likely at least a few of those could be monitored monthly, but the more frequent testing of alkalinity like they're doing is certainly a higher percentage path to success because it's the fastest to deplete. They're also changing out the filter pad every few days, doing those 10 to 15% weekly water changes, at the same time sucking out the detritus from the bottom of the tank. They also change out the ROX carbon every two weeks. Moving on to monthly, they're cleaning up the power heads to make sure that they're running properly, as well as cleaning out the sump and sucking up all the detritus in there. I think this is one of those areas where this is probably be done more frequently in a work environment than it is at home. I don't know many people who clean their power heads monthly, but honestly, I think this is part of why WWC gets away without running a controller or cloud-based monitor. There's just so much attention to detail, and as Josh said, this is a display tank and its purpose is to look nice. That includes the pumps. That's a statement that I have to agree with. Monthly, they're also blowing off the rocks and doing a deep cleaning of the aquascape. The theme in these tanks over and over is get the detritus suspended, keep it suspended with flow, and then remove it with filtration, most notably the filter pad. The long-term schedule is a bit more packed and comes at different intervals with removing and fully cleaning the skimmer pumps every three months and every six months doing the same with the return pumps. Again, the process of cleaning them helped catch issues long before the end of life as well as keeping them running without precipitation or other issues in a pretty good schedule regardless of if it's a home or business tank. Every three months doing a bit of a snail check and replacing those that may have died or got eaten by hermits or other critters. The reality is snails do tend to dwindle over time, so not a bad idea. About every six weeks, remove and clean the T5 reflectors and lenses on the LEDs. Sol creep on reflectors in particular can drastically reduce the overall par. They also use a shop vac to clean the fans and the radions every few weeks. Every three months, replacing the CO2 canisters, nine months to a year replacing the calcium reactor media. They often top off every four to six months, but at nine to 12 months, the bits get too small and clog the reactor, so it's just time to replace all the media. At the same time, they replace the tubing, which gets brittle, and lube up the O-rings so they don't dry out, get brittle, and leak. They also check the check valves in the calcium reactors with a pressure check. One interesting note is WWC also replaces pH probes every six months, particularly those that manage critical functions like a calcium reactor. Most home users calibrate them every three months or so after about six months to get extra life out of them, but in this case, they just don't feel like it's worth the risk. Randy just released a Beerus TV Investigates on Wednesday, which shows the concentration of a calcium reactor's affluent at various pHs, and it is significant. So I guess I can't blame them for just wanting accuracy and replacing the probes before they fail. There's just too much coral in this tank, depending on the chemistry and accuracy of the equipment. Then lastly, change out the RODI filters every six months. They use some huge filters to produce a lot of water, so it's probably a good time in that environment. Then at the same time, clean out the saltwater bins. Saltwater bins tend to collect precipitate and other impurities over time, and it's important to clean them out from time to time. Not only do you not want to add that to the tank, you certainly don't want to let it build up forever and risk dosing concentrated bursts. So at a minimum, clean the bins every six months or so as needed. If you see the gunk building up, clean it out. 
Brightwell seems to mix up cleaner than most and why they produce tens of thousands of gallons and only need to clean it out every six months. Okay, so not a lot of debatables here, and I wouldn't call anything we talked about groundbreaking information, just a good, solid maintenance rhythm that should be covered as part of the overall hybrid system. If you follow this, you're probably amongst the, not just the top 10% of reefers, but also likely to achieve the same 5 to 10 high percentage success rates that are associated with that 10% bracket. It's hard to remember to do all these things and when they were done last, so I'd absolutely put them in a calendar, a to-do app like Wonderlist, or even better, your controller's calendar or note system. Something like the Apex will send you reminders to do specific tasks that you set up, as well as provide areas to make time-stamped notes. So what can you expect to see next in the hybrid series? Well, we're almost to the end where we're going to go into that update mode and follow the progress. Test corals are going in this week, some additional fish in the next couple weeks, follow with the main addition of corals in a month or so. So in that spirit, I think we might take next week off and do the fish update in the following week. Give Elliot over at Marine Collectors a bit more time to pre-quarantine them before they go in our systems. One of the things we're also going to do is boil all 20 of these episodes down into one specific method video without all the debate, just a straightforward list in a single episode someone could reference and follow to achieve the same results as WWC and BRST teams have had, as well as what you're going to see as you follow the progress of these three tanks. Just to give you a window into a future series, my family and I just moved to a new house, so you know what that means, new tank time, so expect to see that, but I think a brand new format, which has never been done, still working out the kinks, so we'll see how that pans out. The Beerus TV testing area is also getting much closer to finish with big thanks to Neptune, Ecotech, Red Sea, Vertex, and of course the team at WWC who's kindly supplied many of the corals for our test, so I'd expect to see more testing as well. So in that spirit over on Reef to Reef, we got a poll asking the community what they would like to see tested most, and we'll try and prioritize some of that stuff based on the feedback. It'll be interesting to see what the community has to say. Last but not least, it's maintenance day, and over in our hashtag AskBeersTV group, we're giving away five grand in salt. That's 30 buckets of what they use over at WWC with Brightwell Neomarine, and 30 buckets of what we use here at BRS in our tanks, including those for BRS TV Investigates with Tropic Marin Pro Reef. That's 60 buckets of salt and 60 winners, so it should be fun for anyone who wants to try out these salts, as well as check out what's going on in the BRS community. We give away fun stuff on YouTube here every single week. It just seemed like the reefers over on Facebook deserve some love this week as well. To enter, you can check out the prize page on our site. Click the link in the lower left or description, or just search for hashtag AskBeersTV on Facebook, all of which will lead you to the contest page. Join the group and make a comment on the sticky contest post. Since there's so many winners, this should be a fun one. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.